Expert RAW in 2024 is arguably Samsung's best camera app. It's got some updates to it too that have now elevated it above what it was before. But how does it work? What do all the functions do and how do you put them into action properly? This video will show you everything that Expert RAW can do. Let's go. Expert RAW is one of Samsung's camera modes. Samsung have intuitively put it inside the camera app in the More tab, which is great because it gives you much easier access than finding the app in the app drawer. So you access Expert RAW through here, tap on it, and you're into the interface of Expert RAW. Before you get into anything with to do with the interface, let's dive into the settings and make sure we get everything set up properly. First thing you want to do is turn on Save as JPEG and RAW. This will save both copies of the compressed JPEG and a now lossless raw copy, DNG. That DNG one is better for editing later. The JPEG is probably the best one you can share straight away if you like that style of processing. But if you like to tinker with your photos, have the raw copy on, trust me. With this new update that just came to Expert Raw, like a couple of days ago before I made this video, Samsung have enabled a toggle called lossless raw. Lossless raw is basically a not a compressed raw, it's like a zip file raw, where basically it takes all of the information from the raw DNG file, doesn't compress it, but packages it to fit inside something smaller, saving storage space. And then when you need to, it kind of can unpack it into its bigger form, preserving all the data and information. You've got a couple of different types of raw. When you turn this off, it'll basically be compressed raw, where it does actually compress the data and the information down to save heavily on storage space. You can see the difference between taking a lossless raw and a normal raw. The size of the file is substantially different. There's like in some cases up to 40 or 50 megabytes difference. Turn this on because it will definitely, whilst take up more storage, give you a better experience in editing later. It's hard to determine to the naked eye when you sort of zoom in on a lossless RAW. It's more when you are manipulating the photo later that you notice it. With the 50 megapixel resolution, lossless RAW is turned on by default and you cannot turn it off. Just something to be aware of. Underneath lossless RAW, you have adaptive pixel. When you turn adaptive pixel on, it will work in low light environments only. What its main purpose is, is to stack a lower resolution image and a high resolution image to combine the brightness levels of both to give you a brighter high resolution photo. To turn this on, especially in low light environments, works great. You've then got the labs menu and with the S24 Ultra and S23 Ultra, and I think now the Fold 5 is starting to get some of these as well, it's got a whole bunch of extra fun stuff that you can do inside Expert Raw. Things like ND filter, the multiple exposures tab is in here as well. I'll go into how these work a little bit later in the video, but just know this is the place where you can toggle these on and off in the settings. There's the save selfies as preview toggle, which is self-explanatory, but I'll still explain it. Basically, if you turn this on and you take a selfie, instead of flipping it, it'll save it as it's previewed when you're taking the photo. You can see the difference between the two. The first one with this turned on keeps it as it looked before. Then turning it off, it just flips it around like a mirror. Pretty simple. In the rest of the general settings, you'll definitely want to turn auto HDR on. This means that you don't have to think about dynamic range. It processes it for you. And also turn on the grid lines. This will absolutely help you frame up your photo, but also turn on the photo leveler feature, which helps you keep the photo nice and straight. Then there's the shooting methods menu, and you can go in here and turn on any of the specific methods that you like. I definitely recommend turning on the palm selfie one. I think that's great because for selfies in particular, hold up your palm, it recognizes it, and then captures the photo for you. But if you have a phone with an S Pen, like the S23 Ultra or S24 Ultra, you can use the S Pen as a remote shutter to, to initiate capturing your photos, as you can see here. Okay, we've got that all set up, all the right toggles are turned on, let's dive into the user interface and figure out what everything is and how to use it. Starting down the bottom, because that is probably the main customizable part of Expert RAW, is that you have the ISO. ISO is adjusting the sensor's sensitivity to light. So as you can see, as you slide it left or right, depending on what toggle you like, it increases sensitivity or decreases sensitivity. If you have it on auto, it can actually go below the 50 that you can set manually. Don't know why it doesn't allow you to set it manually below 50. It's just a weird thing that it does. But if you want it to push past 50, you have to leave it on auto. Otherwise, you have control to be able to make it as you like. In conjunction with that, you have shutter speed. The shutter speed is basically controlling the camera's openness. 
That's there's a better way to describe that. The shutter speed actually controls how long the shutter of the camera stays open for, thus increasing how much light it can absorb. So if you want it to just be really quick and snap the photo really fast, you put it all the way down to the bottom or auto again will put it down to the bottom and make it even faster. But if you want it to stay open a little bit longer, as you can see in a brighter environment, it allows more light to come in, thus overexposing the photo. If you have both of those set to manual, the exposure value, you'll see it sort of change a little bit as well to be minus or plus. The exposure value though, you can leave the other ones at auto and you can just control this and then let the phone figure out what settings to make. The exposure value is basically just a meter telling you whether you're overexposed or underexposed or perfectly balanced. With that, with this slider here, you can go underexposed and you can make it darker and then it'll adjust settings accordingly to give you that or overexposed and again, do the same thing. Those three kind of work conjunction with each other to help you get the photo that you want. So use that exposure reading as a bit of a guide to help you. Next to the exposure value slider, you have the focus slider. This is a really cool one to utilize. It's been in there for the longest time, but basically you can choose the focus peaking for yourself. So if you've got something that you've got really close up, you can adjust the focus slider and you'll sort of see this green outline appear and it will that's highlighting what's going to be in focus. You can take the photo and everything else will kind of be this soft bokeh effect. Or you can flip it and you can set it to sort of focus on stuff in the background and the foreground will be blurred out. It's a really clever way of sort of doing some creativity within your photo and it's built right into Expert Raw. Just a side note, I took this photo of my son playing with a mate of his at the beach and you can see the foreground is kind of in focus and the background's kind of softly blurred, giving it this really nice drama. I love it. This was taken with Expert Raw. You also got white balance as well, which allows you to adjust as advertised, the white balance. Again, this can be manually adjusted or auto adjusted, depending on how much time you have and how lazy you're feeling. If you want to save any of these as a preset, it's really easy to do. There's a little like slider icon. And if you press that, it brings up the existing presets you have and a plus icon to add the one that you've just created and name it. That way, any time you need to go back to this specific environment, you can just straight to that preset and you can take your photo straight away. Really clever. And then on the left-hand side, if you want to go back to automatic and, and standard, press the little reset toggle, sets everything back to normal. There's something in here that I actually am a huge fan of, is Samsung have split off the autofocus and auto exposure tap to focus sort of button, I guess you could say. In normal camera mode, if you tap on the screen, it sort of focuses on that area and exposes on that area. With the Expert Raw one, you can tap on it and then split them up, which I think is really clever. So auto exposure will sort of expose the area you've left it on and auto focus will focus on that area. So if you've got a subject that you want to focus on in the foreground, but you don't want to overexpose the background, expose the background, focus on the foreground, let the camera do its work. If you want to reverse that, you can do that as well. Or if you want to keep it both locked on the one area, you can do that too. It's really clever and I like how it's all sort of intuitive. A couple of swipes and taps and you've got it. At the top, you have the timer. That's self-explanatory. Next to that, you have the resolution options and Samsung have built into Expert Raw with the S24 Ultra and the S24 Ultra only a 24 megapixel option. It's just this perfect middle ground between processing and detail and it's only for the main camera. The second you sort of switch to the other cameras, it's only taking 12 megapixel just be aware of that. You have metering. The metering tells you what it's for as well. So whether it's going to be metered specifically for just the center of the photo, whether you want it metered for like landscapes and bright lit landscapes, it'll tell you that. Or if you've got like subject of a photo, it'll tell you that as well. So that's a little known one that not a lot of people sort of play around with because it's sort of tucked in the middle hidden. This can change the output of your photo and it's good to set it depending on the environment you're in. And then you've got the three specific expert rule functions which I'm going to go to pretty much in detail right now. Before I get to that though, camera tests and sort of camera comparisons can sort of put your phone at risk. Because you're holding the phone at sort of unnatural angles and you're potentially trying to move your hand across the screen, there's potential to drop your phone and you need it to be protected. That's where today's sponsor, Magback, comes into play. Magback sent me over their S24 Ultra MagSafe compatible case alongside the Magback wallet that magnetically attaches to the back of the case. Starting with the case, 
It provides 360 degree drop protection and has been drop tested to a height of six feet. It has a soft touch grip that might feel soft, but is sturdy in protection. It also has my preferred camera protection around the back. It is raised above the flat display for protection when on a table and has cut a recessed area for the buttons, which creates a flush aesthetic and great protection. Protection that gives you total peace of mind when you're out and about taking photos of moments you just can't miss. It has nine embedded magnets with two layer shielding inside, which is incredibly strong. But despite the warning, it supports mobile payments, wireless charging, and even the S Pen. If you want to slap a Magback case on the back of your S24 Ultra, Magback are offering you 15% off using the code TECHWITHBENEFITS15 at the link in the description so you can grab one for yourself. Thank you to Magback for sponsoring this video. Thanks Magback. Now that we know where everything is, let's break down the functions of Expert Raw. At a real basic level, Expert Raw is computational raw. So it takes the power of what Samsung have built with their processing in their main camera mode and the power of flexibility and customization and the power of RAW and smoshes them together. It's multi-frame image processing added in with RAW photography. Now it's not traditional RAW, so don't come at me in the comments already. I know there's a difference between Pro Mode and Expert RAW. In fact, I've started my sort of early comparison of Pro Mode versus Expert RAW, so please hit subscribe to see that in the future. But it just is about taking the power of what smartphone photography is and combines it with the power of your touch and eye with your sort of editing that you want to do. But the thing is, Expert Raw is more than just the manual controls that it gives you down the bottom. Especially with the Ultra series, it's got all of these fun extras that are just going to be so much fun to work and play around with. Quickly touching on the S24 Ultra exclusive, the 24 megapixel. This is going to be that perfect middle ground, like I said, for that processing and detail. And when you see a sort of example of all three of them lined up, they might look very similar, but the detail and the processing is probably the most balanced between the 12 and the 50 with the 24. So just know that for, for example, that that's gonna be the case. Especially now with lossless RAW coming in, Samsung have made 24 megapixel on the Ultra, the default resolution for taking photos with the main camera. So it seems as if they've put all their eggs into that basket, I don't mind that. When we compare the lossless RAW to the compressed RAW, you can see the, the difference in file size, which I highlighted before, and you won't really notice that until you edit it properly. So I've edited two here and I've got the screen recordings of both going. So you let me know which one sort of comes out the best now that the final versions are on the screen. But you're not here to learn about a resolution. You want to know about the modes that are at the top. Let's get into them. First one is multiple exposures. Samsung have effectively built in manual frame stacking. So you can actually take the frames yourself at different exposure levels, but rather than you combining it in software, Samsung actually process it on the phone. For this to work at its maximum, you do definitely need a tripod because it requires the phone to be still and capture the exact same frame multiple times. The thing is though, it's not just capture the frames and call it a day. Samsung have got plenty of controls in here for you to customize the experience. You can adjust the shutter to be continuous. The phone will adjust the settings and stack the frames continuously and capture them continuously. Or you can manually capture the frames, meaning in between each of the frames, you can change and interact with the settings. It also will show you an outline too. So in between each frame, it sort of shows you the frame before as like a, like a ghost. I want to say like, you know, when you used to play those racing car games back in like the PS1 days, and you could race against a ghost lap of your previous lap time or your best lap time. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit, a bit of a throwback. In between frame capture, you go and toggle the settings and then it'll and you take the next frame and toggle it again. In addition to that though, Samsung have built in different ways it can stack and combine the frames together. So you've got addition where it will basically just literally layer on top of each other, the different frames that you've captured. You've got average, where it will kind of just try and average out what you've done and give you like a best middle ground. Or the other two, are you've got dark and you've got bright, which literally do as advertised. It leans towards the darker one or the brighter one, depending on the exposures that you've captured. You can also choose how many exposures you want to capture down the bottom. You've got a slider to go, I think up to nine is the amount that you can capture at one time. What this does, it just gives you as the photographer a little bit more control over how you capture your frames. Rather than relying on the phone's processing to capture them, you can capture the settings and then it will just stack them for you and give you an end result. It's not bad. Next to that is astrography. I think that's what Samsung call it. Now this 1000% requires a tripod and a pretty clear night sky. 
something I'm unfortunately not blessed with living in the Gold Coast, especially living pretty much in Service Paradise where the lights just don't turn off. But I can at least show you the guide and where to go and how to sort of set this up. So if you have the right environment, you can smash through this no problem. When you turn this on, there's a couple of different things that you can set up. You can turn the sky guide on or off, basically using your phone's data and GPS. It knows where you are. And then when you point it at the sky, it shows you the stars and where they should be. So you can kind of figure out where you can be pointing your phone to get the right photo that you want to capture. You've then got how long it will take photos for, because basically it's just going to be capturing frame after frame after frame after frame after frame at different shutter speeds, and then stack them all together at the end and give you the best refined process photo. Samsung have removed the, the times there. It's given it a name like short, medium, and long. It still will give you a JPEG and a raw copy at the end. So you still have the editing capabilities afterwards. Just, it is definitely a process photo because it's captured multiple, multiple frames. Even if you don't have like a pitch black environment, it can actually give you a pretty decent nighttime photo anyway. So even if it's dark-ish and you want to brighten it up, this can help you do that. You just have to be patient. The last one is pretty new. It came via One UI 6 last year. It's the ND filter inside Expert Raw. Now it's not a real hardware ND filter. It is a software filter ND filter. Say that a few times. Software filter ND filter. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on ND filters specifically. My basic understanding is it's like a pair of sunglasses for your camera effectively will dull the harshness of light so your camera doesn't have to absorb as much light as possible and it at least can help you see things if it's very bright in the environment that you're in there's multiple steps to this nd filter there's two all the way up to a thousand and sort of numbers in between and as you go through them you can see the different effect that they have on the camera activating the nd filter and the different steps also changes the scope of the manual controls down the bottom so if you wanted to change the shutter speed to below 0.5 you can't because that's as low as it can go it needs to kind of keep the shutter open a little bit longer to absorb as much light as it can because it's being blocked by a filter per se now what should you use this for on a smartphone when you're just capturing photos of people, none of those things. What this is really for is sort of artistic photography. Things where you've got either really bright environments and you want to try and capture some sort of motion within the photo without having to resort to overblowing it or overexposing it. This will help with that. Because what this does is it sort of protects the camera from the harshness of the light, especially in those sort of shots, you need to keep the shutter open a little bit longer to capture that motion like waves for example the thing i found in using it that the main camera having this massively open f 1.7 aperture doesn't really allow for this to be used properly i found switching to the five times camera actually is used better because what you get is a smaller aperture at f 3.4 give me like extra 45 i know i'm okay also the three times with the 2.4 it unfortunately isn't compatible with the ultra wide which i think would be sick to work with the ultra wide but it's potentially essentially too wide. So they're the main sort of functions within Expert Raw. You can have a lot of fun in this app. Filtering out with the settings, especially the focus slider, as I mentioned, that can really help create some drama for your photo and give you something a little bit different that the main camera app just won't be able to give you. The best part is once you've got the raw copy, it's time to have some fun with editing. I find the best way to edit is through Lightroom. And I think Samsung do too, because they've built in the Lightroom shortcut directly into the gallery of a photo capture with Expert Raw. So I would go download Lightroom. There's a version you can get from the Galaxy Store, which is Lightroom for Samsung Mobile. Don't know what the difference is. It might just be a bit more optimized for the processing power of the Samsung rather than the one through the Play Store, which is a generic Google Android version. Once you've opened up that and you've gone through the sort of setup process and trying it out, I'm not an editing expert, so I'm not going to pretend to even give you the guide on how to do that. But there's plenty of stuff you can probably find on YouTube, and you can really have some fun in here with the different toggles, even downloading presets to really customize and tune the photo to your particular liking. That was Expert Raw. I want to know which one you're most excited to start using yourself, and if you're using it already, which one you've got a lot of change out of in your personal usage. Having a lot of fun building this community. I hope you're enjoying being a part of it. Hope you're enjoying the knowledge I'm trying to transfer over to everyone. Been a real blast so far and I can't wait to continue. Hit subscribe, hit like, go check out my other videos. Come follow me on Twitter slash X and on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next one. Yo!